Welcome to Clicks and Coffee. I'm Alexander, and here we dive deep into the journeys of entrepreneurs and marketing innovators. Each episode, we uncover the challenges, triumphs, and unique strategies of our amazing guests, giving you valuable insights and inspiration. Our goal is to build a community of growth-oriented professionals ready to learn, collaborate, and thrive in the ever-evolving world of digital marketing. So whether you're here for the latest trends or looking for that next big idea, you've come to the right place. Let's get started. And today, we've got Roy Kirchner, the CEO and owner of Ultimate 3D Printing, joining us. Roy has been a pioneer in the 3D printing world for the past decade, and I cannot wait to hear his story. Let's dive in. Roy, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. I'm excited. <laughs> All right. So can you tell us a little bit about your career journey and how you got to where you are today? Yeah. So uh, how far back do you want me to go? <laughs> as far as you want. Yeah. I mean, I'll start with, uh, you know, basically I graduated high school um, with a fourth grade reading level. I could not read or write. I had some some disabilities. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing is is making sure that people understand that if you can overcome disabilities, um, for me, school was just not the right pathway. Um, I ended up getting into, luckily enough, I ended up finding somebody that got me into the car business. I, uh, I started selling cars. And literally the beautiful thing about people coming in to buy a car is you get to see what type of job they have. You get to see how long they've been at their house. You get to see how much they pay for their mortgage payment. You get to see how much money they're making at their job. And uh, people that were extremely successful, I just kind of said, hey, do you think you could pretend like I'm your kid and maybe like bring me to work one day or you know, can you, uh, can you help me? Because I want to be as successful as you are. And I found mentors along the way. And at one point in time, I found a, a true mentor that said, you know, don't let your disabilities hold you back. You're not stupid. He just straight up said, you're not stupid. Um, you just learn differently. And that was the whole thing. Like if somebody read something to me, I could completely 100% understood it. If I sat there and read a page, I could get through reading the page because I had a, a disability, but then I couldn't comprehend what the page was saying. So it was really when Audible came out, it was great because everything's recorded and I could listen to it. But uh, I, I got into the car business and I did very well. Um, I did so well that I, I, I found great mentors along the way, but I, I connected with people. And I connected with people so well that when I sold them a car, it wasn't like selling them a car. They were like, Roy, like this was unbelievable experience. Like I hate buying a car, but you, you, you didn't make it hard. And I made it so that if you purchased a vehicle from me, you actually became my friend. And you would send your sister, aunt, uncle, brother, cousin, friend to buy from me. So that's what happened is I just became known as the guy that would sell you a car, but make it seamless and, and was passionate and was successful in doing it. And I think that started, you know, my pathway to growing. And, and when you're selling cars, you're an entrepreneur. Yes, you're working for a dealership. But, you, you know, if you don't sell a car, you're you're, you're not eating. You know, they're, they're not paying you to, to stand there and, and, and do nothing. Um, so it really started, I, I was extremely successful in the, in the car business, ended up getting into market at, and advertising for car dealerships. And, you know, my pathway was I was in marketing and advertising for car dealerships. We were doing extremely well and I wanted to diversify and I wanted to find something that we could diversify and have another business. And I ran into, in 2014, I ran into a 3D printer. I went into a place that's now considered like a, a maker space, a hacker space, a fab lab. And I went for an open make night on a Tuesday night. And I see this printer in the corner printing. And all I remember is going over there and watching it make something from nothing. 
and then getting tapped on the shoulder and the guy goes extreme excuse me sir um i just need to let you know we're closing and i said well but it's not done printing he's like well it's not gonna be done till three o'clock but you gotta go and i'm like no i want to see this thing finish like it's it's amazing so I, I was hooked i i went home i started studying 3d printing additive manufacturing I, I started, I bought a printer from China. I brought it in. I, I played with it. I took it apart. And I was always the marketing and advertising guy. So during that experience, I was I was writing it down. I was taking pictures. And what ended up happening is I, I ended up building a website with a manufacturer from China um, called Wanhao. And uh, I ended up asking them if I could become a, a, a reseller in the United States. And uh, I called them up on Skype one night, asked them, could I become a reseller? And they kept on saying yes, yes, yes to everything I said, and realized they couldn't understand what I was saying. So I ended up hiring a translator, um, connected with them again. They understood everything I was saying, ended up bringing the entire, the entire, um, you know, connected with them, ended up wanting to start the business. And I air cargoed everything into Tampa Bay. So I brought everything into Tampa Bay. And I convinced my wife to let me take all the furniture out of the house and put it in the garage, covered, of course, except for our master bedroom. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you um, here. This is oh actually my, my house right here. And that's that's my dining room table. And <laughs> this is my, you know, living room. And this is my driveway. Oh and my God, talking I, I had commitment. Literally done everything. And I I opened the company. This is pretty amazing. I opened the company and uh I uh no marketing and advertising. I ended up the second day opening the company, I got an email from a guy in Australia. And he says, Roy, I want to buy a 3D printer from you, but I don't know if I can trust you if you're going to rip me off or not. So I said, let's Skype. So I went on Skype with him, told him, listen, I'll drop ship the printer from China to you in Australia. And I did. He got the printer. He went on to Reddit, that website, reddit.com, and told people I was a safe place to buy. And in 30 days, I sold $42,000 worth of a $400 printer to Australia sitting in my house in Tampa. And uh, that's how I started the business was just what happened is I took care of him. I took care of him before, during, and after the sale. And he made sure to tell people. And then people would go on to Reddit. They would buy. They would go on to Reddit and say, yes, this is the place to buy. And, and that's really how I started the entire business, which was you know amazing. And of course, my wife says, Okay, it's it's a valid business. Go sign a lease and get out of the house and let me have my house back. Um, so that was fun. So that's how I, I started the uh, the the 3D printing business. Uh, built it in 2014 and then opened in 2015, and then uh, really saw it grow from 2015 on. We we started you know selling like I said to Australia then Dubai, then the UK, and then it came to the United States. But I was one of the early adopters. And what happens is if you take care of customers, and this is the most important thing, you take care of customers before, during, and after the sale, and you say you, you do what you say you're going to do, when you connect with businesses and you connect with people and you take care of them, then they're going to continue to do business with you. And what happens is you build a brand where it's not necessarily just you in in your house or you in an office. It's a it's a it's a true brand that people follow. And I ended up connecting with large Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies that at the early time and still to this day I do business with them. And as like you said, as long as you do business the right way. And I'm the crazy guy. I'm the SME, the subject matter expert in additive manufacturing, 3D printing. What that means is I'm the guy that gets up at 4.30 in the morning. I want to know every single thing there is to know about my industry. Because to become bigger, stronger, better, you got to know your product. And one thing in this world is things change. They constantly change. So you need to stay up on everything that you're doing and you need to adapt 
you know, in, in a lot of my adaption now, um, which I want people to know is what am I doing at four 30 in the morning? Well, right now what I'm doing at four 30 in the morning is I'm understanding the adoption of additive manufacturing, 3d printing with the word AI, because AI is the next generation. And I need to understand how it's going to affect me, how it's going to affect my business, how it's going to affect my industry, how it's going to affect my customers. So you really, you know, you, you've got to pick these areas and understand that everything is always changing and you, and you got to stay up on those changes, just like we're talking about today, kind of with digital marketing. But I, I grew the company um, the day before the country shut down for COVID. I was in a 1900 square foot facility four employees and we're getting about seven to 10 calls a day. The country shut down. We went to 300 calls a day, every day, seven days a week. We went from four employees to 38 employees. And we went from a 1900 square foot facility to occupying a 65,000 square foot building. And we became the sixth fastest growing company in Tampa Bay in 2021. So we were awarded the sixth fastest growing company. And we it was just like a lightning for COVID was lightning for us. Um and uh it, it was it was it was a lot of a lot of things were going on at that point in time. Growing that fast is uh is not easy. It's uh tremendously and, hard. And be, be, before we get into the details of that, so <clears throat> what's very interesting about this, and, and I'm happy you, you're bringing that, that point, how were you marketing your business before COVID and what were you doing as far as like digital marketing during COVID? I imagine that like 300 calls, you kind of paused all ads, every effort because you were just trying to <laughs> keep up with demand. Yeah, so a lot of it was understanding what the market wants. And what the market was wanting and, and needing at that point in time with 3D printing and additive manufacturing was people were at home and we showed them what was called business in a box. You say business in a box, what's that? Well, they could come onto our website, they could buy a 3D printer or a laser cutter, they could even finance it off of our website, pay around a hundred dollars a month. And then they could start building something, pop open their own Etsy store and subsidize mm -hmm. their income or make income, you know, three, four thousand dollars a month selling stuff online, you know, Etsy or Shopify or TikTok, um, all these different things. So it was using digital marketing for people to realize the capability of what you call business in a box. And that was our that was our lightning strike. That was uh, that was kind of what happened um, at that point in time, and it's it's really defining your message and then pushing it out there using digital marketing. But it, it comes into: it, Are you drawing people in with the correct message? Are you are, are you really paying attention to what people know about your business and what you want them to know? So the most important thing is taking 20, let's say even 20 people that have no idea who you are and tell them to go to your website or tell them to look you up online and, and kind of give you feedback on what the actual customer is seeing or the consumer is seeing. And then at that point in time, you're getting raw data, you're getting real information. And then you're able to take that information and, and, and allow it to align with your like fixed the things that you need to affix for it to align correctly with your, your customers and your clients. And, and so, and now that, you know, we're talking about COVID, you know, we, we all had like the COVID high and then the COVID down, down, I would say, how did you, so how did you pivot or maybe not pivot, but how did you expand from like the COVID? So you, you went from having seven calls a day to 10 calls a day to 300 calls a day you multiply by five the size of your, uh, of no more than five the the size of your warehouse, and and so that's like crazy when you think about it. Just on a on a business, you know, business side of things. And then 
what happened like towards the end of COVID when everything, you know, kind of reopened and we know that some people suffered from that. What did you do to keep growing and what did you do to keep pushing forward? Yeah, so one thing that I want our viewers to understand 100% is I, I call myself an absolute true entrepreneur, okay? And what I mean by a true entrepreneur is in 3D printing, additive manufacturing, there is no school, okay? There, there is no playbook. There's no policies. There's no procedures. There's no manuals. And uh, you're, you're basically creating that from the ground up. So there's still every day I wake up in the morning, I'm like, why didn't I buy a McDonald's? Everything's just figured out. You know what I mean? It, it would just be simpler to buy a franchise and there's books and it tells you how much to pay this person and what this person's job duties are. So when you grow that fast, you, you, you make a lot of mistakes. Um, people say, you know, there's a time when everybody would come up to me and say, congratulations on becoming the sixth fastest growing company in Tampa Bay. And in the background, I'm sitting here dying. Like I'm dying. Like I'm, I'm literally like pulling my teeth out because you, you've grown so fast that you can't even, you're, you're just putting bodies in place. You're not even being able to create policies, procedures, manuals, um, all of these types of things to run your business correctly. You are just literally trying to stay up with the, this unbelievable growth. Um, so what happens is, you know, is, that you, you know, when, when COVID started slowing down, it was actually a great thing for us because we did slow down. Um, but what I did is I embraced that slowdown by creating like these organizational things that I needed with inside my organization to run it, you know, effectively and efficiently. And we pulled you know, we, we started understanding that we had to pivot. So I had ultimate 3D printing store. That was the company that I opened in 2015, where we sold 3D printers, laser cutters, small format CNCs, provided service, support, training. Well, when we started seeing a little bit of a change in the slowdown of e-commerce online, I pivoted and opened up ultimate 3D printing services, okay? So we do printing services for small, medium, large, Fortune 500, Fortune 1000 companies. We do product development, CAD design, and then we do consulting, which is the adoption of additive within an organization because there's not one company out there that can't benefit from this type of technology. It's just them understanding how they can how they can literally do that. Um, so a lot of it was we we pivoted. And that's the thing that you, you have to do constantly, right? I mean, you're a business owner as well as I am. You're constantly pivoting to adapt to change. You know, we're in an election year right now. There's a lot of things going on. Um, there's constant change and there's constant variables in cryptocurrency and there's constant variables in the stock market and there's constant variables in marketing and advertising and trends and social media. So you're constantly changing and evolving to those types of things. And so it's an interesting thing that you're bringing up of, of creating those two new entities and, you know, being able to pivot to expand your business offering. And I'm, I'm pretty curious as to, what was the decision be, be behind opening a new website? Because usually, you know, we try to have one website and then offer as many things. Some people want to offer as many things on the website as possible. And then you, you went like the different route of saying, okay, this is going to be the e-commerce and this is going to be the service. And what was the, the reasoning behind that? And how do you manage the, the marketing behind the two or like the differentiation between the, the two platforms? Um, a lot of it still comes in from the store because people call into the store or they talk to us by email, by, you know, all these different avenues of being able to. And it's really listening to your customer and then letting them 
finding out what they need. And a lot of times they were interested in buying a 3D printer, but they had no idea if if the product that they wanted to make was actually going to work for them. So it's better for us to do printing services, right? Or it's better for us to do consulting with them and, and figure out is, do they, you know, is this going to work for them? Um, and then at that point in time, you know, we would, we would prove to them, you know, so we would, we would get, we would save them that informational gap, you know, of them learning, we would just automatically, you know, print out the piece they needed and then they could see if it worked. And if it worked, then they could either buy printers or continue printing services. So a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of it came directly from the store. We really didn't do a lot of different marketing and advertising for the services, but that's, that's kind of how we, we planned it to be, but the store, I mean, you're constantly paying attention to marketing and advertising in so many different ways, but digital marketing we know now is, is, is huge. I mean, we saw a change, a, an enormous change during COVID where social media was just this thing. It was this thing that people went on to. And then it changed to tremendously. It changed to influencers and it affected people's buying habits. Like that was the biggest change we saw, I think, um, with digital marketing was we we saw that that evolution of people using social media to buy products, to 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 change their mind. So marketing and advertising, we always have to remember is talking to enough people enough times to affect change in their buying habits and convince them to put you on their shopping list. So the most important thing is, is one being on somebody's shopping list. So they got to see you, right? They got to be able to see you um, when they're, when they're looking for something. Right. And then they remarketing we know is them constantly seeing you and, and evolving. It's, it's so interesting because I, again, I come from, the car business, right? And, you know, in the car business, there's a there's a dealership every other block. So what makes you different? What makes you known? And what that is, is branding. You know, that makes you in the in the mind of a consumer is branding people understanding who you are, and why to do business with you. But the, the thing that gets me until this day, and, and you'll you'll agree with me on this, People are not consistent with marketing and advertising, right? And that's the most important thing in the world to be is consistent. People go in and out of a buying cycle. So you could say, Roy, I'm going to buy an iPhone, but you know what? I, I just, I don't want to finance it. I, I, I need to save up for three months. So all of a sudden, let's just say, I mean, hypothetically, Apple stops marketing and advertising. And Samsung's like marketing advertising. In that three months that that person's saving up, if all they see is Samsung, do you think at the end they're just going to buy Apple? No, they're going to buy Samsung because it's in their – it's bred into them. So the biggest thing about marketing and advertising and digital media is being consistent, being consistent. People go in and out of a buying cycle and understanding to take care of them and what makes – us different than the big boys like Amazon? What makes you different? What makes my company different? You know what makes my company different is you can pick up the phone and you can talk to somebody and you can actually pick up the phone and we'll answer the phone and we'll, we'll, we'll give you all the information. When you buy from us, we're here to take care of you before, during, and after the sale. We'll go the extra mile. You could call us and you could say, hey, this is going to be a gift for somebody. And, you know, we would go the extra distance. We'd say, oh, my gosh, let's rebox it. Let's put it in another box. Let's hide what it is. You know, if it's for your husband and it's going to be for his birthday and you, you want it to be a plain box when it comes so he doesn't automatically know what it is. We'll do those types of things. So it's setting yourself apart. You know, it's 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 setting yourself apart and it's being able to have that and that interaction and, with us. Yeah. And being consistent. It's 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 really I'm happy you're bringing this up because one of the thing at the agency that we keep repeating to 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 all of our clients is that digital marketing is not magic. 
It's a grind. It's, you know, every day, every week, every month. SEO, it takes time. Um, we I have an, another business called allsecuretyequipment.com. And when I look back at the SEO effort that we have done, it didn't happen in three months. It happened in a year and a half. However, now we're very strong and we need to keep going. So that I could not agree more with you. That is like day in and day out and you have to keep keep doing it. And so my next question is, you know, for, for such a successful company as yours, what does it take to advertise your company? So what are the efforts that you're doing to keep, as you said, like being in front of people every day? Um, what, what are the types of digital marketing that you're doing on a daily basis, platforms, you know, types and everything? To make mm -hmm. sure that people stay, you know, top of mind with um, Ultimate 3D printing. So what I would say is, the first thing is digital marketing. The reason why you do marketing and advertising is to get a customer, right? But then the most important, you're actually buying that customer. Would you agree with me? You're buying that customer with marketing and advertising. It doesn't matter. Even if it's social media, you're taking the time out. You're paying employees. To, you're, you're posting. Anything that you're doing in marketing and advertising is costing you time and money, right? So you have to, if you're going to market and advertise, you have to make sure your business is set that when you get that customer, they're your customer. They're going to come back. They're going to continue to do business with you because you don't want to buy customer. You don't want to continue to buy the same customer, right? You want to, you want to take care of that customer and then you want to continue to get new customers, right? So you, you got to have these things put in place to take care of the customer before, during, and after the sale. And then the strategic alignment that you're doing in digital marketing is being very consistent on who you are and on your message and on your marketing and advertising. So we do Google AdWords, you know, we do remarketing, we do social media, you know, pretty much anything that you could possibly think of that we do. Um, we've had a lot of tremendous changes in my business um, with the manufacturers in our margins. So our margins have slowly deteriorated, like, and it's sad, but we're not making as much money, okay? So it doesn't allow us to do as much marketing and advertising, right? So you got to be really careful with the money that you're spending, and you got to be really precise on the message that you're putting out there. Um, so I, I would say, you know, if you don't have the capability of dedicating the time, effort, and consideration, then the biggest thing is working with a company like an agency that can be that lifeline for you. And, you know, making sure that you're working with them directly and they're doing what they say they're going to do. But absolutely, um, a lot of people the business owners like myself, I'm not an SME in marketing and advertising, right? I'm not, I'm an SME in subject. I'm a subject matter expert in 3d printing additive manufacturing. Do I know social media? Do I know digital marketing? I do, right? I do, but I'm not an SME. So if you can find either an SME that you're bringing in internally, that they're live, breathe and evening because it's always changing, right? Or you need to find an agency that is that, and you need to hold them, you know, you need to have meetings with them. You need to hold them accountable. You need to, you need to understand, they need to understand your business, but that that's, that's a match made because the, the way you grow and the way you uh, get to the next level is either having, you, you have to have somebody that is that SME, right? Either in your business or outside your business. And you've got to be aligned with those that that individual or that that agency um, to know where you're going. It, it's so interesting because there was there was a time that a young lady had done a TikTok video. This was a couple of years ago, a little bit more than a couple of years ago. But uh, she brought incredible 
gigantic road to the company she did it with, right? And she, uh, a couple years later, I get a, I, I get a resume, and it's her. It's her. So that's that's great, right? That I, I just I got this lady that's proven that she can blow up a company, right? And she interviews with me, and in the first question I asked her, I asked her, I asked her one question. I said, you know, why are you leaving the company you're with? You blew them up, and she said the culture changed, right? She said the culture changed, right? And things changed because we got bigger, and I'm not. They don't. They don't care about me like they used to, right? And so, you know, the the interview goes on and on, and she says to me, you know, but I can do this for your company. And I said, okay, but I said, if you blow, if, if you have to remember, if you blow up my company automatically, then how does all my departments handle that fast, the fast growth? Because I'd already been the sixth fastest growing company, right? So how does, how do you handle like accounting department, accounts receivable, accounts payable, um, digital marketing, a website, um, logistics, shipping? How, how do you, what, what you need to do in, growing a business is everybody working together it being a team right because what i said to her is i want you to do that but i want you to do it at a strategic time what i want to do is i want you to come in and i want to crawl walk run i don't want to run i want to crawl walk run right and the reason why i want to crawl walk run is because when we crawl and we start walking then we get more people in each department or we, we have more resources. And then by the time we're running, we're set up to run, right? We're, we're, we're there or, or, you know, or we're sprinting or we're, you know, running a triathlon, but we're set up for it. And it was, it was interesting because I ended up so crazy. I ended up not hiring her because she, she couldn't understand that I wanted her to come in and be part of a team, a, a true team, and, and allow us to work together to crawl, walk, run with our marketing and advertising and not just run because all of a sudden you could blow up a company. But is that company set up to be able to handle that growth? Because if they're not able to handle the growth, right, then what happens is you get those customers, but then they're never coming back. Like if you ship them the wrong thing or, you know, your customer service is not able to answer the questions, all these things. So I think what business owners need to understand is, uh, you know, the most important thing is that crawl, walk, run scenario. Like taking the, the way you crawl, walk, run is that means you're taking care of the customer before, during, and after the sale. That means you're building a brand and you're creating this amazing business that you you built from the ground up that you want to be successful and 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 you have so much more culture within your organization you have so much more you know people enjoy what they do every single day because you you, you that's the most important thing is 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 loving what you do every single day and enjoying you know enjoying what you're doing and enjoying the team that's around you People don't realize like you're working more with your team at work than than anything else than your home life. So you you want that culture and you want to work together. And I think that's the that's the most important thing when it comes out. So no, no, it's it's pretty fascinating, and it's it's <clears throat> even more fascinating to see that you know really. And especially in e-commerce, everybody thinks that you know e-commerce is just about marketing your product and people will buy, but that's only 50% of the journey of the customer. Then you have the whole, you know, experience. And then, as you said, the, the, how are you treating this client? Um, so I have a, a, a fun question for you. <clears throat> Do you think it is better to have a great product and average marketing or average, uh, uh, yeah, an average marketing or great marketing and an average product? In the long term, you got to have a you got to have the right product. You have to have the right product, one hundred percent. So I, I think it's the product. I, I really do. The product is everything. Um, it's it it, it you got to believe in what you're selling. Um, it's it all it all about what you're doing. You know, it's all about what you're providing to somebody. Like I love 
3D printing, additive manufacturing. I love the technology. I love how it changes people's lives, where it can change somebody at home, or it can change a multi-million dollar company, or it can, you know, it, we're in the dental industry. It can, you know, it, it, it can replace teeth in your mouth. I mean, it's it's yep. solving problems, and it's such amazing technology that I, I just can't wait for more people and more companies to embrace it um, in the world, and especially in the United States. I mean, it's, oh my gosh, it's, it's bringing manufacturing back to America. It's, it's, it's literally, you know, it's solving issues. It's, it's teaching our next generation, this amazing technology that's going to evolve just like AI. So, so you're a product guy. I'm a product guy. <laughs> I, I am because it, it has to be that way. Um, because you know, it's are you in it for the long? I, I have to say that because are you in it for the long haul? You know, are you trying to? Is yeah, it no, you know sure. so, somebody that's that's the other way? I think it's like wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and then you're off to doing something else. So, I, I think it it's it, it's your it really has to that's do three D printing. Three huh? D printing is your calling. Is really like your yeah. your is going to be your lifelong passion. Yeah, it's it's one of my lifelong passions. I don't think it's my entire lifelong passion. Like right now, I'm the crazy guy. I'm in my mid 40s and I've realized that my personal branding means a lot. So I I I'm doing right now as we speak, I'm doing like this talk to camera 30-day challenge, you know, where I'm like putting a camera up and I'm talking to it every single day to learn how to talk to camera better. And I realized like these 17, 18, 19, 20 year olds, they can do it perfectly. Like they grew up with it, but I didn't grow up with a camera in my face. I grew up talking to people, you know? So um, it's interesting. I, maybe I'll send you the bloopers of me talking to camera over 30 days. Cause it's, it's pretty funny, <laughs> you sure, know, but sure. I'm, I'm realizing that also, personal brand goes along with your business, you know, like to, to grow your business. Um, people now look at the CEO, the owner. Um, and, and I just want people to know who I am. I want people to know how passionate I am about what I do and how much I love it and in, in love, you know, taking care of people and showing in showing them how this technology can change their lives. No, I 100% agree with you on that. I feel like it's always, I always try to favor, um, I would say businesses, especially online that you can relate to businesses that, you know, it's a, it's like a, you can count on them. It's not going to be, you know, uh, automated, um, automated phone system where it's going to take you 30 minutes to try to do a return or anything like that. It's great to have businesses like yours. And so, you know, I can I can hear by everything you said so far that your business and at least your industry is slowly maturing. And so I imagine that in order for you to still be relevant, you have to watch all of the data um, of, of marketing on your website. So, and what are your top three KPIs that, or, or, or not even top three, what are the KPIs that like on a daily basis or weekly basis in marketing, you're like watching to make sure your business is going the right way? Or, or if you have to pivot when you see something is off, like what are your indicators um, as far as marketing for for you for your uh, company? Yeah, I mean, I would I would say that it's not, you know, we 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 evaluate stuff, you know, typically on a biweekly but mostly monthly basis. We have a lot going on. Um, and we really are looking at, you know, everything, website visitors, you know, how, how long they're staying on our site, um, tracking. That is, that is, yeah, that's normal to kind of checking everything, but like, what are your favorite ones? What are the ones that like, you know, you get on your console or you ask to get a report from your team? Like, what are the ones that when you look at it, you kind of know, okay, if I'm hitting that number, I know I'm good for the month. If I'm hitting that, that percentage, I'm good for the month. Uh, or, you know, if we see that it's trending like that, um, you know, we need to do something. We're like, what's happening? Yeah, I, I mean, so I have, 
because I'm, I'm diversified in businesses, I have like a senior leadership team and I have a digital marketing guy that would probably, I'm just being straightforward with you, would probably be able to walk you through our KPIs better. So what I realized as growing is I, I, I give those types of responsibilities now through my senior leadership team. Um, so I, I could get those for you, but unfortunately I don't have them for this exact podcast. Um, that's so pretty good. That's pretty good to be, to be in a position where you can you know, truly rely on, on, uh, on your team, team for, uh, for that. That's pretty good. Yeah. One thing that you realize when you're growing is you, you need to have what is called an SLT, a senior leadership team. And you have certain individuals within your organization that are part of that SLT, senior leadership team, and you provide them the opportunity to have those responsibilities responsibilities um and i've i've been able to do that and I, i i could dive just a little bit into that so as we were growing as we were growing i i went and heard a lady speak that had just has a company locally here in the tampa bay and her company was doing 800 million 800 million this year And she said, I wouldn't be where I'm at today without this gentleman. And this gentleman, his name was Chris White. And he created a system that helps you run your business. And it's called System in Soul. So it's a system to have these systems in place. But it also, because it's called System in Soul, the soul is the soul side the culture within your business. And a lot of it is based upon like EOS and traction. I don't know if you've ever read those books, yep. EOS and traction, but it's a hybrid off of EOS and traction called them and soul. And that allowed us to adopting that process allowed us to be able, just like you said, to be able to know that the people I have in place um, are doing their job and they're holding the people below accountable. And they're allowing us to grow by having that there. It's allowing me to do what I do best, which is be a visionary and look at the future and look at how we we continue to grow and help people. And so I have a couple of questions to, to close out this podcast. What is your favorite app or tool that you use daily? My favorite app or tool? One is, and I'm going to tell it to you right now, is Audio Pin. It's an AI app on my phone um, that just came out. And you kind of talk to it, and it it fixes everything, and it shortens, and it can translate. But it's A-U-D-I-O-P-E-N. And I found it on a website called Product Home. So ProductHome.com, I'd recommend If you if you want to understand AI and you want to see what's going on, go to that website every single day and look at it. Um, so Audio Pin is definitely one of those. And then I work, I I I I, I do a lot of growing. And one of my mentors is a gentleman named Tony Robbins. And he has a mastermind system and he has an AI, an AI tool called Gigi inside his system. And I use that every single day. So those, those two, those two are my kind of in chat G, you know, chat GTP, but it's, that's what audio pin in, in uh, Gigi is. So, are you, are you but, okay. but what, but what Tony Robbins did is he actually took everything, every book, all the knowledge that's in his head and filled it into this AI. So now when I'm talking to it, it's like, you're talking to Tony Robbins. So it's pretty cool because it has all his books and everything stored and everything that he knows in and this accessible AI right Gigi. away. And wow, yeah. that's, that's yeah. really so, cool. That's that a really, really awesome? cool thing. Wow. Isn't that amazing? Maybe you should do the same thing with 3D printing with what 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 with with everything that's in your head and then create a virtual assistant for your website where you know people ask and then you know everything, you know, you know, kind of all the use case 
And that could be a pretty powerful tool as well for you to do that, like some kind of, you know, a, a, a chat bot that would have all the knowledge of, of 3D printing and being able to stir people in the right direction. Yeah. And that's kind of, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of looking to write some books, especially even about this technology. And yeah, unfortunately, I don't have like books and books and books like Tony does over the years and years and years to push it in. You know, I'd have to talk to the AI and that would take a little bit of time. But I, I get what you're saying. I, I never thought about that as much as what you're saying now. And I'm now you got me intrigued. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going <laughs> to Tony I'm gonna, Robbins is a subject expert. On, yeah. T Tony Robbins is a subject matter expert on personal growth and your yeah. SME in, in 3D printing. So you know, why don't you do the same thing for 3D printing? It sounds to me like anybody that wants to get started, any business that wants to solve a problem in 3D printing, they should talk to you. So you should have something yeah. available in the in the same thing on the website. But uh, I think after the podcast, I'll, I'll share something with you. So we have this uh, partner company. Um, that's what they do. They have an app you can install on your website and they train on your website and then they can make recommendation to the customers almost on every page. So, and it's it's like AI based. They train on your website and then on the language model and probably chat GPT. And then from there, they can help people uh, with choosing products. So I'll, I'll, I'll share that with you after. And so my final question is, what are you excited about in the world of digital marketing? And what are you worried about? What I'm excited about is the same thing I'm worried about. It's 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 there. Um, it's staying up with it. It's being relevant. Um, it's it's being all over the place all at at one time. Um, you know, so I, I think it's understanding trends and seeing what's coming out. We know, you know that you know, that, uh, it's going to change. You know, we know that, uh, it's kind of funny you say that cause like TikTok, right. I was just listening to, to Gary V talk about, you know, what happens if TikTok goes away and you know what he said? He said, I'm going to lock myself in a cellar for 30 days and I'm going to see where all that traffic goes. I'm going to see where all those people go. And then I'm going to be able to report on it. I'm going to be able to tell you like it all went to Instagram and you need to shift a hundred percent to Instagram or it all went to this new TikTok that somebody else created. Um, so I, I, you know, like you said, he's the, he's that SME, but I, I think it's, you know, it's, it's paying attention. Um, it, it's, it's man, it's, I, I, with AI um, integrated into digital marketing and in social media, um, I, I can't even imagine, like, I, 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 you want to stay three steps ahead. And I think the biggest thing would probably be that's your path more than mine. I'd probably ask you, you know, that. But I, I, I know that being an entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur, owning businesses um, outside of Ultimate 3D Printing Store and services, I have other things as well. Um, I know that there's there's constant change. And I constantly have mentors and networking and even like this podcast, I know afterwards the relationship that me and you grow, I can call you, I can say, Hey, what's this about? What's going on? Like I read this and, but I don't completely understand it. Tell me. So I think networking and, and doing all those types of things. Um, but I, I would probably, I'd probably throw it back to, to you because you're, you're more that guy that lived, breathes, and eats it than I do. So you would be more of that industry expert. <laughs> no, but it's, it's a, a very interesting response because uh, people always you know, tell me about a specific thing. But you, what's interesting is kind of like the true mind of the entrepreneur, which is like, I'm excited about the opportunities and I'm worried about the opportunities, which is very, you know, it's, it's a, a very, very interesting thought. And, and it's totally true that like, you know, what's coming next, what's, what is going to be my next opportunity, but at the same time, how do I stay relevant and how do I, you know, uh, capitalize on that opportunity? So that was a, a, a very, I would say a very interesting and philosophical uh, answer that we should all think about today and, and, uh, and really make sure that we keep ourselves 
uh, informed and educated on, on how everything is changing. Yeah, and, and that's where I say, I'm that guy. I am that guy. I get up at 4.30 and I pick a subject. And like I said, my subject, even right now, is AI. But I pick a subject that I think that's going to affect my entire life and business. And I spend th that time, maybe an hour in the morning before anything else, before my dogs are up, before my wife's up. And I, I learn about that. So I think that's the thing. Like at one point in time, I'll shift and it'll be social media. At one point in time, it'll shift and it'll say, what's the algorithms changing with Google and, you know, Bing and, and, and how, what, what's, you know, who's taking market share. And then, you know, in that hour, I could even set up times where I'm talking to somebody about it. Um, it like you said, having networking, different things like that. So I think as a business owner, You know, I, I see a lot of business owners make a tremendous mistake. And I think the tremendous mistake is being so ingrained in your business every single day that you're not lifting your head up and looking at what the future is, right? And you need to do that. You need to cut out that time. And that time for me is that 4.30 in the morning, right? That That's my time that I cut out um, because once the day starts my phone's ringing off the hook this is happening that's happening but that is my time whether that's my time whether if it's some joyous thing that i want to learn you know about a new boat right that's my personal hobby or something that's going to make me happy outside of work or is it you know i want to understand like you said ai and how it's going to affect you know my business or how it's going to affect digital marketing and social media, um, all those types of things. So I think as any business owner, I think that's, that's, that's a huge thing that you need to carve out time and you need to, you, you need to network and you need to talk to people and you need to find a circle of people that you can trust. Somebody like you that understands you know, what they know, Part of your and then yeah. I can count on you to do it. Yep. Cool. Well, Roy, it was amazing talking to you today. Very exciting. Anybody that wants to learn about 3D printing or just get started, uh, I'm sure that even if you don't want to do 3D printing, I think people should just call you so you can give them a reason to get started with 3D printing because, you know, a lot of people don't necessarily know what to do with 3D printing, but it sounds to me like, If I call, I probably end up buying something from your store. Uh, so if you, you know, if you want to get, if, you, if you're interested about 3D printing, you know, head out to ultimate3dprintingstore.com. Just spelled out how it is. Very simple. And you can find everything on the website. As Roy said, you can call them, ask them question, and they will help you. So Roy, thank you so much. Good luck on your website and good luck on your personal project of becoming a famous speaker. So I hope soon we'll see you everywhere on all the, the social media in front of thousands of people talking and inspiring people. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time today and thank you listeners for, for listening. And um, definitely if there's anything at all that you need with 3D printing, additive manufacturing, you know, reach out to us. Um, whether it's the service side or the store side. Thanks and have a wonderful day. Bye, guys.